All right, so another sneak peek. I know it's been a bit of a tease, um, but I've been kind of playing with uh, some ideas and all these new functions that are coming. I wanted to kind of take the idea uh, that was in my head and actually get it on the Sabre. Um, so a little while back, I introduced the idea of the intensity lockup. Um, the idea being the longer you hold the lockup, the intensity of the effect would actually grow. Um, I'm kind of expanding on that, but then also we introduced the new style modifier. So we had the ability to invert, uh, to compress, to mirror, um, and do a lot more with these styles. So you can take an existing style, but now you can apply these new modifiers, uh, which are functions, and actually do new things. Um, and then there's also going to be several new transitions that are coming. Um, a few of them I've kind of demoed a little bit, but never really that closely. Um, but there's actually a lot coming in OS 6 on top of edit mode, on top of the choreography, on top of all the other stuff that's you know kind of been teased over the last couple months. Um, there's a lot of big changes coming to styles and just what we're going to be able to do. Um, so these are kind of a few of the ideas. Um, they're not perfected, they're not finalized, but just to kind of give a little bit of a demonstration of um, you know what's going to be possible. So we've always said you can do a ton with Profi, but now with these new capabilities, the new functions, the new transitions, um, we can actually do a lot more and do a lot more detail. Um, and that's kind of where we're going. So um, the, I have an intensity lockup here, but I've actually added a few things um, to it for the, this one has it for the end lockup, um, but the second one I'm going to show has some other things on it. Um, so this one's going to have, um, obviously, the similar begin lockup. So you're going to do your full blade flash on uh, initial clash. It'll fade into that localized lockup, which is obviously fully responsive. Um, but one of the things I had done in uh, older OS was the power ripple. So when you let go a lockup, there was a ripple effect that went up and down the blade. Um, it is there in OS 5, but the one in OS 5, because of how it had to be done, it always started in the center of the blade. Um, the new capability of mirroring, um, as well as the new center transitions, which actually move the center of an effect anywhere on the blade, allows for the ripple effect to actually look better. And particularly in person, it washes a little bit on camera so you don't see the full detail. Um, but so now when we uh, end this lockup, if I have the lockup down here, the ripple's actually going to generate here. In OS 5, the ripple actually always generated here. So if you had the lockup section lower or higher, it wasn't perfectly aligned. Now, small detail, but, you know, if you're really talking about effects and details, it, it, it does kind of add to it. Um, and then I have some even more new stuff for lockup. So this one's going to be uh, an intensity lockup. So the longer I hold it, it's going to get more unstable, and it's actually going to grow a little bit. So we'll go in. So I get my lockup. I can obviously move it. But the longer I hold it, now I'm going to start to get kind of an unstable lockup effect. It's going to flash a little bit faster. It's actually going to grow. And now, when you let go of it, I get that ripple effect. But that ripple effect is actually generating where that lockup was. And I know it goes quickly. Um, but on top of that, it's mirrored. Um, so one of the things about the other ripple effects is they don't actually mirror. They actually can sometimes be offline. The now the capability of mirroring the effect means that as it moves, it's an exact copy of itself mirrored at that center point. So it moves away at the same speed, it looks the same. Um, and again, because the camera washes that ripple out a little bit, uh, in person you can really see that it actually looks it looks a lot better, particularly to me, I'm, I'm kind of a stickler on that. Um, but so I'll do this one one more time. So I get my lockup. Now that lockup's kind of low. And that, you'll see that ripple actually did start right where that was. Again, the old ones didn't. And that's because we have the ability to now center transitions actually anywhere on the blade as opposed to only in the middle. Um, now, using that center effect, I actually, a uh, combination of the new mirror function um, along with the ability to do center transitions, I actually have a new, a new begin lockup that I'm playing with. So the initial begin lockups, you can do a full blade or you can do localized. This one's going to start with a full blade flash, but what's going to happen is it's actually going to suck into the middle. So the full blade is going to go white on clash, and then to get to the lockup, it's actually going to, again, find the center, and it's going to suck the effect in. It has a really quick ripple in to that location um, and concentration. Then you're going to get to your intensity lockup where it's going to actually, the longer you hold it, it's going to become more unstable. This one has a little extra ripple to it. Um, and then when I let go of this one, it's actually going to, again, this one's going to have a little bit more uh, kind of a pronounced ripple effect. Um, I space the ripples out more, and it's going to, again, always generate from where the lockup actually occurred, uh, which just makes it look that much better. So when we first go into the lockup, it's going to flash white, but you're going to see the effect actually pull in to the middle, and there'll be a slight ripple on it. So you see that quick pull in? And you can change your timings. And then the longer I hold it, I'm going to get that ripple in in my lockup, and now when I let go of the lockup, it's going to ripple out from wherever that center is. 
So you'll see it actually used that exact center to ripple out. Um, and again, uh, it goes really quick. And again, I'm doing it speed-wise just because you don't want to have those type of effects hang on the blade. They don't look really realistic. It should be quick. Um, but when you see them in person, they're more noticeable than on camera just because of how it does. But I'll show it again. So you're going to get a full blade uh, white for a split second, a ripple into wherever the lockup needs to be, and then you get the intensity lockup, and then you're going to get a ripple back out. And it just all these begin and lockup and all these ripple transitions, they, to me, they just really enhance the effects because just having that lockup section in the middle is cool and having it move is cool, but having it actually react, having it look like it's actually something really happening to your saber, I just think that's the level of detail I've been chasing. Um, and now all these new functions make it possible. So one more time, so I get that pull in. As I hold that lockup, I'm going to get more intense on it. Now it's really intense. And then when I let go of it, I get that ripple out. Um, and, and that's just kind of a sample. Obviously, there's a lot of different transitions we can do in and out. Uh, but being able to now keep location of the actual lockup section as it moves. Um, and again, it's all responsive. So as you move that blade, it's going to move itself. You want to have all the effects always keep in line. These new transitions plus the new mirror functions just let that all happen. Um, now on top of that... Um, I'm taking the idea of the intensity lockup and I'm applying it to melt and to lightning block. Um, and again, this is now possible with these new functions. Um, so this one I've got, now melt is still going to be fully responsive. So it's going to, you can change the temperature, so the red to orange to yellow just by turning your hilt. Um, but what's going to happen with the intensity version is the longer I hold it, it's actually going to go from kind of being a colored effect to an actual fire. And this is possible because we can now invert the fire effect plus we can compress it. Um, so what's going to happen is it's actually, the longer I hold the melt, it's actually going to go from being a heating section to an actual flame effect. Um, and this one I've actually added some sparks to it too to really make it seem like you're melting through that metal and it's starting to give way. And then again, the flame itself actually is still responsive too. So you can go from a red flame to an orange to a yellow flame while the effect is active. Um, so we'll go in there so I can go yellow, I can go back to red. But as I hold it, it's actually going to start doing a flame effect. And now this one has the white sparks. You could take the white out if you wanted and just have it do a fire. But the idea is the longer you hold that melt, you want that intensity to pick up. So it starts off kind of a simple, and then the longer you hold it, and again, you can extend the times. These are all kind of just starting points. Um, but like I said, this one actually gives off some sparks from the flame, and it is using a real flame effect. So you're going to get the fire effect, but because we're inverting it, so it's coming this direction, plus we're actually compressing. So normally the effect is calculated for the whole blade length, by using the compression capability now with the style modifier, I'm actually compressing what should be in the whole blade all the way down to about, you know, a, a little bit over a third of the blade just to give it really a more intense look. And you get that detail out of it because of those style modifiers. So I'll show it one more time. So I can heat up the metal. Then it starts to spark and flame. And I get that flame effect running up the blade. And then I can let it go. And again, the, everything obviously being customizable, but we can change the speed of the flame. We can change, take away the sparks. You can do all that. Um, and then the last one, this one's still kind of in the works, but I wanted to kind of give uh, a primer to it, um, is I'm adding some intensity capabilities to lightning block. Now, the lightning block effect actually since uh, OS 4 has actually had um, responsive controls, and it's actually already done some of this, um, but I'm just enhancing it. So the idea is the longer you block the lightning, it's going to obviously be erratic, but the longer you hold it, it's actually going to start to kind of limit itself more to the middle. Because if you think about it in the films, as the, the Jedi is blocking the Force Lightning, um, as they start to get control over it, they start to obviously reverse it back to whoever's sending it at them. Um, so that's kind of the effect I was going after. Um, and then actually, for uh, because there's a strobe effect on the Lightning, um, there is a ripple in there that'll come in the intensity, but the strobe kind of almost overrides it a little bit. But... Uh, my eye can pick it up, but I'm not sure if the camera will. Um, and again, I have some other ideas on kind of just, I want to take lightning block even further um, than we've been doing. Um, I just need to play around with it, but these new capabilities will make it possible. So here's going to be our lightning block. So obviously it's all over the place, but what's going to happen is it's going to slowly start to center itself and concentrate more in that middle and there. And now there is a ripple in the middle. But because we're dancing all over the place, it, it gets a little hard to see. And again, there's a strobe on top of that to mimic that lightning. 
So we might have to do a kind of a, a color variation to get lightning block for those ripples to show because because of the 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 just the uh, way strobe works, it actually makes some of those animations a little harder to see. Um, and I'm actually working on some ideas for some end lightning block transitions. Right now it's always been kind of a fade, but I think we can do a lot more with that. And again, these new functions are going to make that possible. Um, so I know a bit of a tease, um, but the, the, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate some of what's going to be possible, particularly the level of detail. So that's the, to me, the big thing is we've always had great effects. There's always a lot of things you can do. Um, but now being able to take kind of a style and then do some modification like the mirroring um, like the compression, like the inversion, uh, just lets you add even more detail to all of these effects, make them feel more realistic, make them feel more, you know, kind of next level. So instead of just being the same effect always being right here for your lockup that just has kind of a, a, an erratic flicker, now that, that intensity is going to be, if I hold that lockup for a while, it's actually going to change the effect. Um, and same thing with adding the flame to the melt, that's something I've actually want, been going after for a really long time. Now that we have the ability to invert and compress the flame, we're actually getting a real fire effect on melt, which just looks really good. Um, the ability to add those sparks in there, which you can take out. Some people don't like the white spark in their flame. You could take that out, obviously. Um, just so much more capability. Um, for those of you who build styles, you're going to have just so much more flexibility. Technically, everything you think you could do now, it's going to be multiplied you know, three or four times over with the style modifiers, with the new functions, with the new transitions. Um, and obviously, because one of my favorite things about Profi is designing styles. I have a lot of new ideas that I'm chasing, a lot of new stuff that I'm going to eventually get into the library. Um, just so much more, uh, you know, better transitions in and out of effects. Uh, the effects themselves are not going to be so static. They're going to, you know, give more life to everything. So lots of great stuff coming. I'm really excited about it. Um, I know I'm going to get the individual questions. It is coming soon. Um, I'm finishing up my stuff. Frederick's got some stuff he's working on. Obviously, he's got a lot on his plate with uh, the, the new V3 board and stuff. Um, once my stuff is all submitted, he'll give it a review. Once it's all up to his standards and we've cleaned up and kind of optimized the code, um, then we'll obviously be going into like the alpha testing. And really, that's where kind of the idea of an ETA comes out of, is after we've gotten into alpha testing and we see how much work needs to be done that's left, um, that would be kind of a really more of a thing. But um, I'm finishing up what I can and then it'll be you know just a little bit of patience but it's going to be so worth it there's just so much coming um, and this is only the really really high tip of the iceberg so lots to come hope you enjoy